This year I won $95,000 in a poker tournament. I'm not a pro, I'm a composer, an editor, and dad in LA. I've played poker all my life. I've cashed a few tournaments, played with friends. This year I started studying more and decided to play more live tournaments. And then I won on the very first bullet of the first tournament I played. It was pretty cool. My wife baked a cake. I was buzzing for days. Then my friend Greenballs, he says, This could be the best thing that ever happened to you, or it could be the worst. And we left. <laughs> but he was right. I never thought that I could actually do this for a living until now. And is that a pipe dream manifested by the dopamine hit of the winning? Probably. Or is it real? They say anyone can bink a tourney, win just one. But I feel like I'm good, and I'm willing to put the work in, so why not? Look, it's been a weird year. That tourney win ended up being real income for me and my family. Midlife crisis? Maybe. Personal renaissance? Perhaps. Opportunity knocking? I think yes. Let's do this. But not like in a Home Depot way, like in a life-changing way. So now what? With so much at stake, so little time in my life, how can I find out if I'm a really good poker player? Can I win a big one? Can I win against the best? Can I just win any tournament ever again? Now what? Now we play and we find out. First stop, back at the bike. I haven't played here much, but it already feels like home since the win. A home with robot servers and security guards who don't let you film. Are you recording, sir? No. At least I know where all the tournament tables are. Or at least I thought I did. When I show up for this $1,100 entry day one flight, there are only two players seated. Which is really weird because it's usually pretty hopping. Maybe it's the bigger entry fee? But as I rethink my decision to enter, two more players show up and we're off. There's a four player minimum here, so as soon as there's four, they shuffle up and deal. That gets us into the very first hand where I look down at a beautiful sight, two black jacks. The cutoff calls and I raise it up on the button to 800. This might have been a little light, but the small blind folds and the big blind makes the call and the hijack comes along as well to a wonderful, amazing, just, yes, flop of jack, A2 with two diamonds. It checks around to me and I'm thinking maybe my hand is a little too strong here. So I consider a check, but I think I wanna start getting some chips in the pot. So I go for about a quarter pot bet here. And after a bit, the big blind thinks about it and decides to raise five times that. Oh, just a lovely sight and a great way to start a big tournament. Didn't have to wait long for a huge hand. And when the hijack comes along, my ears start ringing and I start to think about how do I get all the chips in right now? So I raise to 12,000, hoping this isn't too big and we get at least one caller. And then the big blind goes into the tank. He sits there for quite a bit and now I'm thinking, okay, he has a flush draw, maybe a, a nut flush draw. He's deciding if this is worth it. And we're all just waiting there for about a minute until he decides on his move. Oh boy, the hijack gets out of the way and I could not shove my stack in there fast enough, show my jacks, and then just as his friend shows up, he tries to guess his buddy's hand. Let's see it, let's see it, that's in nine. Same nine with diamonds. But it's not even that good. He shows the king nine of diamonds. Now, I'm admittedly new with the vlogging, so I can't even remember to lift up the camera to shoot any of this. Mostly because it all happened so fast, and also maybe because it's like watching a car crash in slow motion. The turn is the ace of diamonds. My head is hot, I just sit there forgetting I could still pair the board, and the dealer just throws out the seven of hearts and it's all over. <coughs> Welcome to the vlog. Let me quickly review what you're seeing and hearing there. It's me clearing my throat <clears throat> and then me getting up, forgetting to shoot the board and trying to play it cool and cutting the camera too soon and almost dropping my phone. It's so funny that you could play three full days of a tournament, win, and then on the next tournament, be out in less time than it takes you to listen to Jesse's Girl. 
So now I guess we blame variants and we move right along. Let's buy in again. I've got the cash, right? Look at all that money. Not really much of that is gone. According to the experts, I need 100 buy-ins for the tournaments I'm playing. And while I made about 100 buy-ins for this kind of tournament on the big win, I don't have all of that as a tournament bankroll. A lot of that went to normal things in real life. But I also don't have the time to commit here, which in the end might be my biggest problem. So I kind of have to invent some new tournament math here. Something like my bankroll divided by my available time multiplied by my willingness to take a chance on higher buy-in tournaments to make it all worth my while. This is definitely not covered in Dan Harrington's book. So let's just set sail on this journey together. Shall we? I rebuy, and here we are back at the same table, seated directly on the right of Mr. King Flush. I'm in the cutoff with Queen 7 suited, the low jack limps, and I'm a broken puddle of a man, so I limp into the big blind. He just checks. Here's the flop, Queen 7 5 rainbow, and I'll be damned if we're not flopping the hell out of this tournament so far. We should be at the final table, I think, by now, but you know, variants. Low jack checks. I bet 400 and every single one of them called. Okay, so maybe we're getting sucked out on again here. Three on the turn and I bet 1200. At least the hijack folds here. Three of us left now and I'm hoping for a clean run out and we get another three. And so when it checks to me, I check back here. I didn't think I was gonna get value from anything worse. Maybe I was wrong. I show my two pair. The button has a queen with a bad kicker. Maybe I missed a few chips here, but give me a break. I'm freshly back from a terrible start and it's nice just to have a win under my belt. On to the next hand, which is just a sweet result of possibly playing a hand a bit unconventionally. I look down at pocket fives in middle position and there's one limper ahead of me. Sometimes that's a dangerous proposition in these tournaments. You get a lot of aces limped early. But on we charge with a raise up to 2,000 and I get the small blind and the original limper come along. The flop, once again, could not be any nicer. 853 rainbow and they both check to me. I think I have to get some chips in there. This flop isn't good for my range so it might look like I'm bluffing here. I throw out 2,000 and early position calls and when the turn is the deuce, the early position checks and I tank for a bit to make it feel weird and then I jam, hopefully he's putting me on two high cards and a dream and when he calls i flip over the set and he says no you're not right i don't have ace king i have a set and just as i was hoping he turns over top pair which isn't good enough here dead on the river and i double up finally feeling the build here big stack here we come it's reminding me of that deep run it feels good and we're off to a hand that i love to get pre-flop, I think we all do. Here's a couple of kings. Some confusion here on my raise. It's so hard to navigate having good cards when there's confusion. You owe me a hundred, yes? But it's the thousand. I raise it a thousand. Just, just wait till, till he ends. Wait till he ends. Okay. I'll give back. You don't want to push too hard and be like, oh no, I raised this much. No, wait a minute. I said I said raise. I didn't say a number. I said. But you want to make sure there is a raise. So. Is that 1,000? Okay. It was like raise, just 100. Someone told me it was 900. Yeah. That's right. I, I heard 900 too. Right? He said okay. raise. That's why I said. Uh, okay. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I just said, I just said raise. Yeah. <laughs> 900, 1,000. Yeah. yeah. And then the big blind calls, and I'm thinking, okay, here comes an ace, and I'm just going to lose it anyway. Flop comes a 6 4. Of course. And even though that ace is scary, I think it hits me better than it hits these guys. And when they check it to me, I bet 1,000. Only the big blind calls. And the turn is the jack of diamonds. I still think this is better for my range against the big blind. So when he checks, I bet 3,500. And I finally get a fold. All right, so we're hovering around 55K here, and when four people limp in the next hand, I look down at king three of spades in the small blind, and I try a little squeeze here, bump it up to 5,200, and only the middle position player calls. The flop comes down 10 deuce deuce with one spade. Not terrible for continuing, but I choose to check here on this paired board, and the middle position checks back. The turn is the four of clubs, and now I lead out for 5,200, thinking I could just take this down here. But old middle position decides to jam for about five times that and I just have to let it go. I guess I should have checked back here. I don't know. So I'm bleeding chips a bit when I look down at a beautiful sight. Kings in the hijack. Just two hands later and 
the early position player, the same who just jammed on me in the last hand we reviewed, makes it 1400. I bump it up to 5100. And I'm hoping this makes it look like I'm steaming a bit and trying to get revenge. So when the small blind goes into the tank, I'm thinking, okay, this pot might get big. And I'm okay with that. The small blind's the same guy who stacked me with the flush on the very first hand of this tournament. So in my story, and in my head, I have a lot of recent history with these two players. And I'm hoping that I could look like I'm trying to get revenge. And when he ends up just making the cold call, the original Razor comes along as well. And now we're going three ways to a flop, and uh, I'm really praying for no ace here. And the dealer abides. A nice Jack-8-4 rainbow flop. Lovely sight. And the early position leads for 600 now, a, a tiny price. So I'm gonna stick with my story. I'm in revenge mode, trying to steal the pot. I make it 10,000 to go, and I only have 20K behind. So this looks incredibly strong or incredibly bluffy, I think. And the small blind tanks for a bit, and then he jams. Oh boy. Is he gonna stack me twice today, really? Early position gets out of the way. I have to make the call, expecting to see some sort of set or two pair, and he turns over queens. I double up, take down a big one, and do in fact get a touch of revenge here, and it's feeling good. So I chip down a bit with a couple loose calls, and I look down at ace nine in the small blind. The middle position shoves for about 7,800, and I decide to gamble a bit, hoping his range is capped at some weak ace or king queen or something. And when the big blind comes along, we go to a flop of 998 rainbow, which is a beautiful set. I check, try to get the big blind to bet maybe. He just checks back. And then when the seven comes on the turn, I fire out for 5600. The big blind folds and I'm gonna take this one down to keep me going. At this point in the tournament, I just run super cold. I get three bet a bunch and I, I just can't keep up. To be honest, I feel a bit overmatched with a few new players at the table I recognize and a few pros. And this definitely is a sticky part of the tournament for me always, about 30, 40, 50 big blinds. I could build a stack up, last to this point, the big blinds start increasing. And as we get closer to the money or the day two cutoff, I feel like I'm a little out of my depth. So I think this needs some work for me and more on that later. So in this hand, I make a pretty loose call in the big blind, so many min raises. So I call one bet here, and of course I lose the top pair. Just not good fundamentals here, I think. A little undisciplined, a little loose, maybe getting a little tired and a little desperate, running out of positivity. And when we look down at queens and the big blind and raise, we get jammed on by ace king. And he catches a king on the flop unceremoniously dismissed and I kill the recording as soon as the king has the flop out of frustration. A couple of things here. Vlogging is hard. Much respect to everyone who does it and does it well. Hopefully I'll get better at it. Variance is real and painful and really hard after a big win. But I'm here to fight through it and I understand that's part of it. I need work on my 40 big blind game as we get uh, closer to the money, as we get a bigger stack that starts dwindling when the blinds go up. I have patience, I think I can build a stack, but when it comes down to it, I think I need work in the 30 to 40 big blind range. Advice, who do I learn from? Where do I go next? I've read a lot of books, I've been on a lot of coaching sites. Do I get a private coach? I've been looking for one. They're expensive, but it, I think it would focus my time in the a little bit of window of time that I have, I think it would be efficient. So I might be doing that. What other improvements do I need to make? I have a few ideas, we'll get to those soon. And what are my goals here? I think I want to win again. I want to win another tournament. Small one, big one, doesn't matter at this point. I just need to know that it wasn't a fluke and I'm good enough and strong enough and people like me. No, I don't care about that part. Thanks for watching if you made it this far and hopefully you'll see more soon. Bye.